essay. I'll start with you here. Is the Saquon deal unfair? Um, I believe it's unfair for him. It's not unfair for all running backs because we've seen situations, for example, like Miles Sanders with Carolina, if I remember correctly, we ended up getting about $6 million a year or what have you. And, and so a lot of people thought that was relatively fair uh, for him where he got the second contract or whatever. It didn't measure up to the time of dollars that Saquon Barkley and those guys are looking for or whatever. But he's not on that level as good as he is. The reality is, is that when you look at Saquon Barkley, first things first, Jim Irsay, I don't want to hear from him. First of all, I, 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 I could, I could sit Ever up there and, and, and go Ever all in, in life. Go all in, all, all in him. I really, really could. This is a man who needs to be quiet. You should be quiet. If you're just, Jim Irsay, if you're watching, you should be quiet. Just shut up. Because you, nothing you say is ever good. Nothing you say is ever good. I'm not going to even mention how you look when you're saying it. I'm gonna, but in this particular case, we didn't see it because you go on social media of all places. You an owner. Now, this is a situation where the league is talking about we negotiated in good faith. Do you see how lopsided these deals are in favor of owners compared to the players in a league with a hard salary cap? Are you kidding me? I mean, the discrepancy in terms of the level of benefits that owners receive compared to players is astronomical. You should be quiet, sir. You really, really should be quiet. Having said all of that, here's the important point to, to, to point out. Modifications are made even in the aftermath of collective bargaining agreements all the time. This is why it's important for a player association to have a relationship with leagues. Because when you see, even in the aftermath of negotiations, that something is unfair and you want to do good business because you need those players to market your product so your product can continue to flourish, and the NFL, clearly that's being done because they print money for crying out loud. If you see the discrepancy, it's something that should be addressed. In the case of Saquon Barkley, who's clearly the best offensive player on the New York Giants, it is a situation where, as a running back, you can not only be franchised once, but twice. This is not the supermarket. This is not a television network. This is not an accounting firm or anything like that, where if you don't like what you get, you can go somewhere else to play. There is no place else to go and play. And if you look at what a, a player is doing at the running back position, the level of production doesn't seem to matter just because of their birth certificate. Oh, they're 27, 28 years of age. Oh, they'll probably be done next year. We ain't giving them a long-term deal. We're going to take them one year at a time or whatever. I say eradicate the franchise tag for running backs, if not both of them, at least one of them. Allow running backs, unlike other collegiate athletes, to come into the league after one year, guys. One year. Any other position, you got to go in college three years, come into the NFL draft. You're in, the, you're in college football and you play the running back position, let them come into the league a year or two early. So they can get they can have an opportunity to get their money, just like players from different positions could get their money. You do something like that, then it inches towards fairness and really, really rewarding individuals for their proper marketability, as opposed to exploiting them and then throwing them out like yesterday's trash. I'm not saying that's the case with all running backs, RC and Harry. I get all of that. I understand what was collectively bargained, but there are cases when it as it pertains to running back where it is flagrantly unfair. And I think when we see that in the interest of good business, Mr. Ursay, you can sit back and say, yeah, that is a good point. Let's be fair-minded. We're not going to, we're making hundreds of millions of dollars individually as owners. We can modify that to some degree. I think that's the decent thing. to do. You know, this is... This is a, a very difficult thing to say. And we had this conversation recently, and I knew I wasn't on the player side in totality. And it made me a little sad, a little apprehensive. I actually apologized for it. Yeah. What the New York Giants negotiated with Saquon Barkley is not unfair as much as it's unfortunate. Now, I wasn't a part of these negotiations. I don't know what Saquon Barkley ask for. I don't know what his agents thought was a fair deal for him. But when you listen to Najee Harris, it shows you that this is a league-wide problem. It's not just the New York Giants. The New York Giants are not setting a precedent for treating running backs this way. The New York Giants are following the trend. The New York Giants are following the trend and saying, for these people or for these teams and organizations that have given running backs big money, 
What was the result of it? If I'm the Los Angeles Rams and I give Todd Gurley big money after he's the offensive player of the year, what have I gotten from it? If I give Ezekiel Elliott the type of money that he got in Dallas, what have I gotten for it? CMC in Carolina. And so I do believe that Saquon Barkley is worth a long-term deal. I believe that Saquon Barkley did everything he needed to do to get a long-term deal, but that's going to be slotted in a specific spot. And it's not about the Giants. It's not about Saquon. It's not about Andrew Thomas or Daniel Jones. It's about the way the league now values running backs and what the CBA is allowing teams to do. And so whereas I see it as Saquon Barkley deserves some security, I still understand why he doesn't have it. And that's what makes it unfortunate is that the league is now set up to treat one position this way and it will never be changed because that's not what collective bargaining means. You bargain for the collective, you don't single out one position. And so now if you think that owners can't get together, GMs can't get together, and they can't collude and say, this is where this market is going to be, you have to be out of your mind. But what's unfortunate is people like now, Saquon Barkley going forward, Najee Harris going forward, Jonathan Taylor will be held to this standard of saying, we aren't paying you, you take what we give. Yeah, I think when you, when you look at how the running back market in the running back room is being portrayed or how it's being devalued, in my opinion, and you look at the deal that Saquon, Saquon Barkley has, I believe it's unfair. But I also want everyone to understand this. When you're talking about the front offices of organizations, and RC, you alluded to this a little bit, you, you talk about these owners of these teams. We got to remember, they are businessmen and businesswomen first. Hey, Jim Ursay had comments about it. Najee Harris thought it was unfair, and I know you had more to say. Well, listen, I wanted to throw this out, and I wanted to reiterate what I said the other day, guys, in terms of numbers. Harry, you wasn't here, but RC was. Um, and then I wanted to add a little nugget of intel that I just acquired as well. The other day I pointed out, Harry, and RC will remember this, um, 125 NFL players currently have uh, average annual contracts of $15 million or more per year, which is obviously what the running backs are pursuing, Harry. Of those 125 players, offensive players with average annual contracts worth at least $15 million per year, 22 wide receivers, 22 offensive tackles, 17 quarterbacks, seven guards, two tight ends, and just two running backs, okay? And, just, and Jason Kelsey, uh, you know, at center, he's like at $14.25 million this year. But here's an additional thing that I wanted to add, because, Ryan, I know you heard that the other day. I just got this just now, Ryan Clark. NFL team rosters, they carry about four to five running backs and only one place kicker. Did y'all know that the average kicker makes about $2.2 million per season? Do you know what the average running <laughs> back makes? because running backs can be like third, fourth straight. I know, I know that. I know that. But do you know what the <laughs> average running back makes? $1.8 Oh, $1.8 million. I'm just saying. When you yeah. look at something like and that. And you talk about the wear and tear on the body. Sorry to step When you on look you, at Stephen something a, like yeah. that, it's like, you know, I get it. Because like you said, Ryan, you know, you got, you got to take those third and fourth string guys into consideration. Obviously, they ain't making mm -hmm. so much money. But I'm just saying from a business perspective, because when you, who has sat across the table from owners, Ryan, when you're sitting across from them, right, then you know what this is about. This is a problem with the NBA right now. You got all of these dudes with their analytics. And what they do is they know numbers. That's the language the owners understand. So you hire the dudes that know numbers. And as a result, they hire dudes that know numbers, okay? And then numbers crunching yeah. instead of really dissecting and analyzing the game. And you're trying to push them to get to, to get to the crux of it. Look, this is about the game and these players. You're sitting across from an owner, and you look at them and you say, okay, you, you, you understand numbers, right? How do you justify that running backs average less money than place kids? You know what I'm saying? That's all. Yeah, I th yeah, I think that's what's th th that's what's difficult about it because you want place kickers to get their money too, and that's the job of the NFLPA. What deal can we put in place that allows everyone to thrive as a whole as much as they possibly can? But look at the way the rules of the game have changed. The rules of the game are for quarterbacks to excel. They feel like quarterbacks. Put the butts in the seats. Scoring points 
is what makes the game exciting. So we got to protect quarterbacks at all costs. And so now that we're protecting them, we're allowing them to be extremely productive. We're finding ways to make them stars individually. We have to pay them that way. So Mike Tannenbaum was on TV with me. We were on Get Up on Tuesday or Monday, I think it is. And he said, if you're, if you're the Mara family, you have to think about Kayvon Thibodeau. You have to think about Andrew Thomas and how they'll look at you if you don't play, pay Saquon Barkley. And I said, they ain't going to look at them no kind of way because we are independent contractors. Do you think when Andrew Thomas is offered his money, he ain't going to take it? Do you think when Kayvon Thibodeau is yeah. offered his money, he isn't going to take it in solidarity, solidarity with Saquon Barkley? And I also said, they're going to get paid because they rush and protect the passer. Already, yep. one of them has set the market for guaranteed money at the position. This is where the NFL is headed. It's an unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. It's unfair as the whole, but it's going to continue to go this way, and I don't foresee it changing. Yeah. All I know is this. I'm going to a lot of Giants games this year, and I'll be wearing a 26 jersey. Okay? I'd also say that running backs protect quarterbacks as well because the more effective they can run the football, 100%. the, less the, less the quarterback is exposed. Yeah. So, yeah, Stephen you're not Agreed. blocking yeah. for him, Agreed. but in the same yeah. breath, you are assisting in protecting the quarterback. And, oh, by the way, they are running back. And they feel, like they, and they, feel like they can draft them anywhere now. Though. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. another know. problem. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.